Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome to Pray First. Today is Monday, November 28th, 2022. <clears throat> I can hardly believe that the month of November is nearly gone. It seems like I think October and November are two of the months that fly the most for me. I'm never quite sure why. It just always feels that way. Good morning, Leanne. How are you doing this morning? Good morning, Barbie Shook. How are you doing? Okay, so pray first. Good morning, Neil. Pray first. Conversation that we have Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Central Standard Time. This is a time where we dedicate and give God our first, the first of our day, making sure we pause and give Him um, time as we're reading the Word, fellowshipping together, encouraging each other, and praying for each other. Good morning, Gail. So I am sitting in for our lovely Brandy Bell this morning. She is um, still on vacation with her family, having quality family time. I don't know if you guys have seen the pictures, but she's conquering fears. Brandy does not like heights, and that's an understatement. And yet she is conquering her fears and doing all that she wants to do. I love it. Good morning, Deborah. How are you guys doing? Did everyone have a good weekend? I know a lot of people are out of town this weekend. I'm praying everyone made it back safely into their homes, getting ready to likely have to go back to work today. I was thinking this morning, I was just looking over things I had to get done that um, technically I haven't worked since worked. I'm going to put those in quotes. I haven't been in the office. That's a better way of putting it since last Tuesday morning. So I'm like, oh, good Lord, I've got a lot of stuff to do. So I was going to pray first from the office this morning. I thought, nah, it is way too pretty. Like 15 minutes earlier, we had all this crazy fog behind me. It was so neat. And then, of course, it lifted. I segue. Good morning, Bonnie. Good morning, Sarah. Hey, Raymond. All right, guys, if you're coming in here, remember to hashtag live, hashtag recorded. Good morning, Michelle. Make sure you're doing the hearts and uh, likes and stuff on the side there so that people who are new visitors will know that um, we are excited to have them here. <coughs> Oh, there we go. Thank you so much. Good morning, Corrine. How are you doing? Hey, Bonnie. How are you doing? I bet you had a lot of fun with all your grandchildren this weekend. Super cool. All right. So um, I we are in the Bible Project. The Bible Project is where we're reading through the Message Bible. And um, we are also bearing Bibles in all 50 states. So it's been an exciting couple years of reading through this. I know that when Pastor Doug was talking about that, he wanted to make sure that we're um, we're reading the Bible in a version that everyone can understand. This is a layman's Bible, which means the, the language is very culturally relevant today. And um, so it's, it's easier to understand. So that's why we've been taking time to read through it. We've gone through some interesting things, haven't we, with crazy names and crazy situations. But um, I tell you, the word is a, 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 it's alive. It's, it's, there's some of the stuff you just read it and you're like, I can't believe that. But and yet it is. All right, friends, I'm going to go ahead and get started reading so that we can um, get through more of Ezekiel. Um, so let's get ready. Good morning. I'll try and say a couple more shout outs. Good morning, Greg. Hey, Corrine. How are you guys doing this morning? Are you guys all decorate now? I know a lot of people haven't decorated till after Thanksgiving, so now it's time to decorate. Ooh, and I want to know how many of you crazies went out there on Black Friday to try and Black Friday shop. I had told my uh, middle child, I'm like, this year I'm going to have all my Christmas shopping done by the 30th November. Yeah, not going to happen. Just because I always wait till the last minute. I don't mean to. It's just time gets away from me. And I'm trying to be more intentional and not letting that happen this year. I'm waiting for, um, for God to give me. He always gives me a word for the following year. So I'm waiting for that word to figure out what it is. It's kind of like for me, I feel like it's kind of a, a focus word for me, like something that I just, something that I resonate on a little bit more, that I marinate on throughout the year to make sure that it is what I'm doing. Um, last year, the word was deep, a uh, deeper. And so I'm thinking, okay, I think, I think, I don't know. I mean, there's something I had to continually do. But again, I said, good morning, Kelly. Good morning, Larry. How are you guys doing this morning? Good morning, Kat. <clears throat> All right, guys, we stopped at the end of chapter 31 of Ezekiel. So I'm about ready to start our reading in chapter 32. Chapter 32. In the 12th year, on the first day of the 12th month, God's message came to me. Son of man, sing a funeral lament over Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Tell him. You think you're a young lion prowling through the nations. You're more like a dragon in the ocean, snorting and thrashing about. God the Master says, I'm going to throw my net over you. Many nations will get on in this operation and haul you out with my dragnet. I'll dump you on the ground out in an open field and bring in all the crows and vultures for a sumptuous carrion lunch. 
I'll invite wild animals from all over the world to gorge on your guts. I'll scatter hunks of your meat in the mountains and strew your bones in the valleys. The country right up to the mountains will be drenched with your blood, your blood filling every ditch and channel. When I blot you out, I'll pull the curtains out of the skies and shut out the stars. I'll throw a cloud across the sun and turn off the moonlight. I'll turn out every light in the sky above you and put your land in the dark. Decree of God, my master, the master. I'll shake up everyone worldwide when I take you off captive to strange and far off countries. I'll shock people with you. Kings will take one look and shudder. I'll shake my sword and they'll shake in their boots. On the day you'll crash, they'll tremble thinking, that could be me. God the master says, the sword of the king of Babylon is coming against you. I'll use the swords of champions to lay your pride low. Use the most brutal of nations to knock Egypt off her high horse to puncture that hot air pomposity. I'll destroy all their livestock that graze along the river. I'm sorry, I think my dog just realized I was outside. <clears throat> Neither human foot nor animal hoof will muddy those waters anymore. I'll clear their springs and streams, make their rivers flow clean and smooth, decree of God the master. When I turn Egypt back into the wild and strip her clean of all of her abundant produce, when I strike dead all who live here, then they'll realize that I am God. This is a funeral song. Chant it. Daughters of the nations, chant it. Chant it over Egypt for the death of its pomp. Decree of God the Master. In the 20th year, on the 15th day of the first month, God's message came to me. Son of man, lament over Egypt's pompous way. Send her on her way. Dispatch Egypt and her proud daughter's nations to the underworld, down to the country of the dead and buried. Say, you think you're so high and mighty? Down. Take your place with the heathen in the unhallowed grave. She'll be dumped in with those killed in battle. The sword is bare. Drag her off in all her proud pomp. All the big men and their helpers down among the dead and buried will greet them. Welcome to the grave of the heathen. Join the ranks of the victims of war. Good morning, Mary. Assyria is there in its congregation. The whole nation is a cemetery. Their graves are in the deepest part of all the underworld. A congregation of graves, all killed in battle. These people who terrorize the land of the living. Elam is there in all her pride, a cemetery, all killed in battle, dumped in her heathen grave with the dead and buried. These people who terrorize the land of the living, they carry their shame with them, along with the others in the grave. They turn Elam into a resort for the pompous dead, landscape with heathen graves slaughtered in battle. They once terrorized the land of the living, now they carry their shame down with the others in deep earth. They're in the section set aside for the slain in battle. Meshach Tubal is there in all her pride, a cemetery in uncircumcised ground, dumped in with those t sat slaughtered in battle. Just deserts for terrorizing the land of the living. Now they carry their shame down with the others in deep earth. They're in the section set aside for the slain. They're segregated from the heroes, the old time giants who enter the grave in full battle dress. Their swords placed under their heads and their shields covering their bones. Those heroes who spread terror through the land of the living. And you, Egypt, will be dumped in a heathen grave, along with all the rest, in the section set aside for her slain. Edom is there with her kings and princes. In spite of her vaunted greatness, she is dumped in a heathen grave with the others headed for the grave. The princes of the north are there, the whole lot of them, and all the Sidonians who carry their shame to their graves. All that terror they spread with their brute power, dumped in unhallowed ground with those killed in battle, carrying their shame with the others headed for deep earth. Pharaoh will see them all, and pompous old goat that he is, take comfort in the comfort he'll keep. Pharaoh and a slaughtered army, decree of God the master. Good morning, Rita. I'll use him to spread terror in the land of the living, and now I'm dumping him in the heathen ground with those killed by the sword. Pharaoh and all his pomp, decree of God the master. Chapter 33. God's message came to me. Son of man, speak to your people. Tell them, if I bring war on this land and the people take one of their citizens and make them their watchman, and if the watchman sees wars coming and blows the trumpet, warning the people, then if anyone hears the sound of the trumpet and ignores it and war comes and takes them off, it's his own fault. <clears throat> He heard the alarm. He ignored it. It's his own fault. If he had listened, he would have saved his life. Good morning, Brandy Johnson. But if the watchman sees war coming and doesn't blow the trumpet, warning the people, and war comes and takes anyone off, I'll hold the watchman responsible for the bloodshed of any unwarned sinner. You, son of man of the watchman, I've made you a watchman for Israel. The minute you hear a message from me, warn them. If I say to the wicked, wicked man, wicked woman, you're on the fast track to death, and you don't speak up and warn the wicked to change their ways, the wicked will die unwarned in their sins, and I'll hold you responsible for their bloodshed. But if you warn the wicked to change their ways and they don't do it, they'll die in their sins, well warned, and at least you will have saved your own life. 
Son of man, speak to Israel. Tell them, you've said our rebellions and sins are weighing us down. We're wasting away. How can we go on living? Tell them, as sure as I am the living God, I take no pleasure from the death of the wicked. I want the wicked to change their ways and live. Turn your life around. Reverse your evil ways. Why die Israel? <clears throat> There's more, son of man. Tell your people, a good person's good life won't save him when he decides to rebel, and a bad person's bad life won't prevent him from repenting of his rebellion. A good person who sins, who can't expect to live when he chooses to sin. It's true that I tell good people, live, be alive, but if they trust in their good deeds and turn to evil, that good life won't amount to the hill of beans. They'll die for their evil life. Good morning, Brandy. <clears throat> On the other hand, if I tell a wicked person, you'll die for your wicked life, and he repents of his sins and starts living a life, righteous and just life, being generous to be cut down and out, restoring what he had stolen, cultivating life-nourishing ways that don't hurt others, he'll live. He won't die. None of his sins will be kept on the books. He's doing what's right, living a good life. He'll live. Your people say the master's way isn't fair, but it's the way they're living that isn't fair. When good people turn back from living good lives and plunge into sin, they'll die for it. And when a wicked person turns away from his wicked life and starts living a just and righteous life, he'll come alive. Still, you keep on saying, the master's way isn't fair. We'll see, Israel. I'll decide in each of you exactly according to how you live. In the 20th year of our exile, on the fifth day of the 10th month, the survivor from Jerusalem came to me and said, The city's fallen. The evening before the survivor arrived, the hand of God had been on me and restored my speech. By the time he arrived in the morning, I was able to speak. I could talk again. God's message came to me. Son of man, those who are living in the ruins back in Israel are saying, Abraham was only one man and he owned the whole country, but there are lots of us. Our ownership is even more certain. So tell them, God the Master says, you eat flesh that contains blood. You worship no God idols. You murder at will and you expect to own this land. You rely on the sword. You engage in obscenities. You indulge in sex at random. Anyone, anytime. And you will expect to own this land? Tell them this, Ezekiel, the message of God the Master. As sure as I am the living God, those who are still alive in the ruins will be killed. Anyone out in the field I'll give to wild animals for food. Anyone hiding out in mountain forts and caves will die of disease. I'll make this country an empty wasteland. No more arrogant bullying. Israel's mountains will become dangerously desolate. No one will dare pass through them. They'll realize that I am God when I devastate the country because all the obscenities that they practice. As for you, son of man, you become quite the talk of the town. Your people meet on street corners and in front of the houses and say, let's go hear the latest news from God. They show up as people tend to do and sit in your company. They listen to you speak, but don't do a thing you say. They flatter you with compliments, but all they care about is making money and getting ahead. To them, you're merely entertainment, a country singer of sad songs, playing a guitar. They love to hear you talk, but nothing comes of it. But when all this happens, and it is going to happen, they'll realize that a prophet was among them. Chapter 34. God's message came to me, son of man, prophecy against the shepherd leaders of Israel. Yes, prophesy. Let those shepherds, God the master say, doom to you shepherds of Israel, feeding your own mouths. You shepherds supposed to feed sheep. You drink the milk, you make clothes from the wool, you roast the lambs, but you don't feed the sheep. You don't build up the weak ones, don't heal the sick, don't talk to the injured, don't go after the strays, don't look for the lost. You bully and badger them, and now they've scattered every which way because there was no shepherd. Scattered in easy picklings for wolves and coyotes. Scattered, my sheep, exposed and vulnerable across mountains and hills. My sheep scattered all over the world and no one was looking out for them. Therefore, shepherds, listen to the message of God. As sure as I am the living God, decree of God the Master, because my sheep have been turned into more prey, into easy meals for wolves, because you shepherds ignore them and only fed yourselves, listen to what God has to say. Watch out. I'm coming down on the shepherds and taking my sheep back. They're fired a shepherd of my sheep. No more shepherds who just feed themselves. I rescue my sheep from their greed. They're not going to feed off my sheep any longer. God the master says, from now on, I myself am the shepherd. I love that. I'm going looking for them. As shepherds go after the flocks when they get scattered, I'm going after my sheep. I'll rescue them from all the places they've been scattered into the storms. I'll bring them 
them back from foreign peoples, gather them from foreign countries, and feed them, bring them back to their home country. I'll feed them on the mountains of Israel, along the strings, among their own people. I'll lead them into left pasture, so they roam the mountains, pastures of Israel, graze at leisure, feed in the rich pastures with, on the mountains of Israel. And I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. I myself will make sure they get plenty of rest. I'll go after the lost. I'll collect the strays. I'll doctor the injured. I'll be, be, build up the weak ones and oversee the strong ones so they're not exploited. And as for you, my dear flock, I'm stepping in and judging between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. Aren't you satisfied to feed in good pasture without taking over the whole place? Can't you be satisfied to drink from the clear streams without muddying the water with your feet? Why do you rest and my sheep have to feed? <clears throat> Why do you rest of my sheep? <laughs> one more time, I'm sorry. Why do the rest of my sheep have to make do with grass that's trampled down and water that's been muddied? Therefore, God the Master says, I myself am stepping in and making things right between the plump sheep and the skinny sheep. Because you forced your way with shoulder and rump and butted at all the weaker animals with your horns till you scare them all over the hills. Those are the goats. I'll come in and save my dear flock. No longer let them pushed around. I'll step in and set things right between one sheep and another. I'll appoint one shepherd over them all, my servant David. He'll feed them. He'll be their shepherd. And I, God, will be their God. My servant David will be their prince. God has spoken. I'll make a covenant of peace with them. I'll banish fierce animals from the country so that sheep can live safely in the wilderness and sleep in the forest. I'll make them and everything around my hill a blessing. I'll send down plenty of rainy season, showers of blessing. The trees in the orchards will bear fruit. The ground will produce. They'll feel content and safe in their hand, and they'll realize that I am God, and when I break them out of their slavery and rescue them from their slave masters, no longer will they be exploited by outsiders and ravaged by fierce beasts. They'll live safe and sound, fearless and free. I'll give them rich gardens, lavish in vegetables, no more living half starved, no longer taunted by outsiders. They'll know beyond doubt that I, God, am their God, that I'm with them, and, what, and that they, the people of Israel, are my people, decree of God the Master. You are my dear flock, the flock of my pasture, my human flock, and I am your God, decree of God the Master. All right, friends, I'm going to stop there. The end of chapter 34. I'm going to say good, night, uh, good morning to Nita Kay and to Roderick and to Donna. How are you guys doing this morning? <clears throat> okay, my friends. So, just finished with Ezekiel. We'll start back up there tomorrow in chapter 35. All right, friends, it's time for me to pray us out of here. Before I do, just a couple things I wanted to remind you of. One, if you weren't able to watch an incredible sermon or be in um, in house yesterday out of service or catch anyone online, I encourage you to catch um, Pastor Dennis's message <clears throat> that he brought yesterday at Crosspoint. It is um, it is everywhere on our different websites links it's also on the app and at crosspoint.online if you'd like to catch it that's where all the messages are i would also like to highly encourage you guys to come in this weekend at crosspoint or even do it virtually if you want to um we are we're doing our first annual 5k this is where profits of our 5k we're going to um, support and we're we're trying to make local children's <clears throat> so around the Olive Branch, DeSoto County area, Christmas is more magical. So um, all profits from this are going, all proceeds from it. So anything that comes in, we're going to go ahead and bless some families around us. We're, we're so excited to do that for the children. So it's this Sunday at 10 a.m. at Crosspoint. I'll make sure I post out a link here on the Pastor Doug page. So if you had not had an opportunity to register for the 5K, you definitely still can. You can register again. You can do it virtually. You can actually come in person. We are going to have so so much fun that day. I'm going to say this every single day this week that I'm on Pray First to encourage you guys to come on in if you can. It'll be so much fun to be together, to um, fellowship, to go out, and to uh, for an all for an incredible, incredible cause for our community. Okay, friends, that's all I got for you today. Um, I'm going to pray you out of here. Thank you, Lord, so much for this incredible day, Lord. Thank you for being Monday, the beginning of a brand new week, Lord, um, work week, Lord. So um, I, I pray blessings on all my friends here, Lord. Help them have a fantastic day, uh, work week, Lord. Help them to stay safe. Help them to stay healthy, Lord. Oh, my goodness, I know so many are sick. I've heard, um, so li Lord, right now I lift those up who have strep ear infections, COVID, flu, the list goes on, Lord. So just, Lord, please heal them, Lord, and bring peace, um, abundant peace to those around them, Lord, that are praying for them and taking care of them and also keep them protected as they care for them so they too do not get sick. We love you, Lord, and we love 
We just love what we get to do. In your name we pray, amen. Okay, friends, <clears throat> like I was saying in my prayer, I know so many are sick this time of year, so um, if you need prayer, make sure you message us and let us know. I say message us and not comment because I'm notorious for going off as soon as I'm done talking and any comments that come up, well, at least during live won't show, but you can always go back and comment on this post. If you need prayer, we will see it and we will pray for you. Love you all. Have a great day. Bye.